Tyler Perry, thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you, Chris. I, I really appreciate it, man. I, I'm glad to be here. Now, it's so interesting that you have a movie, Jazz Man's Blues, uh, that is everything about what you want your studio and your work and your audience to absorb. Where is this movie for you in terms of how much it means? It's at the very top of anything I've ever done because it was the first thing I wrote. It was in, it, I was encouraged to do it by August Wilson after sneaking to see one of his plays in Atlanta. And I was telling him how embarrassed I was. Sometimes I felt embarrassed sometimes about being on the Chitlin circuit because they, there was a higher brow black person and higher brow people that looked down on it. And he encouraged me to go home and write whatever else was in my heart. I don't have to just write one thing. And Jazz Man started to pour out of me at that time. The Chitlin circuit. Uh, which people, most of us will have never heard about before, but that introduction and how that did as much as anything to bring the races together. 100%. Yeah, we, it, during Jim Curl, there was what was called the Chitlin Circuit. It's when uh, black uh, performers could not get into white establishments. You know, they couldn't perform there. So they went among themselves to little juke joints and, and circuits uh, ch ch where, there was ch where chitlins were served. It, all these circuits around the South and became famous among their own people. And even, you know, even though that was in the Jim Crow South, and I, now when I come along, I can go into any place I want. And, you know, there's no segregation. But, but I, that chitlin circuit was still alive and it, it, it helped form where I am today. And it, it, that audience was right there, 99% black people supporting me all the way through my career up until this point so uh, yeah it's alive and well and it's, it's it's very very important to the to the culture and us as black people so that we can have a voice have our own say and then go on to do other things the ability that you have to show sympathy and empathy whether it's in your own family uh, with people that are part of your past or what you see around you in society why do you think it's such a precious commodity these days? How hard it is for people to care and to see that even if you disagree, there's, there's pain. You should be sympathetic. You should be empathetic. Yeah, we're, we're so desensitized on every level because of all the, we're, be, we're being bombarded with images that are negative. We, we turn on television, everything's negative. And, and I think it's desensitized all of us to sensitivity and the care for another person. You know, it's like me writing about Ira being Jewish in um, in jazz, a jazz man's blues, and Bayou and being the black, you know, the black family. At the, there was this commonality between. Uh, at, at one point, I still hope to, to think that it's that way between black people and Jewish people, and, and I think a lot of it was born out of what uh, the pains that we suffered as black people, and also the pains that Jewish people mm -hmm. suffered in the Holocaust and having to come through. Why? Do you think it's so hard for people to want to be allies, uh, whether it's with, you know, the the uh, the continuing fight for civil rights and equality in society or any of these divisions that just keep popping up? You know, they multiply faster than, uh, you know, even your movies, you know, these new lines that divide us. Why do you think we're so shy about being allies, about compromising? I, I don't know what that is, and that's something that is so foreign to me. I wish I had an answer for you that I could understand it. I, I, I think there's one group that feels like something is being stolen from them, and another group feels like we've never had a, a shot or a, or, or a chance. So, so there, there's all of this polarization, but I, I do know that nothing happens until we get to the middle. I look at what hap what's happening in politics for the last few years, and, it, man, it breaks my heart on so many levels because I cannot begin to understand how we get back to center because we're so far extreme on either side and i'm not republican or democrat because i got problems with both parties and i really have a lot of problems with the republican party especially after the trump and all of these years where i am in all of this right now is where is the middle and what's unfortunate and what's sad is that there's so many good people that don't want to do those jobs anymore because of how nasty and vitriolic and acrimonious the whole thing is. So I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for that voice in the wilderness to show up and say, here I am, I'm going to come and I'm going to walk with us through the middle, male or female. Somebody come along and walk, bring us back to the middle so we can get better, man. This is scary. This is Tyler Perry is going to receive the coveted Icon Award at the Griot presentations uh, this year. The man has achieved everything and he's a billionaire, but boy, he sounds a lot like us, doesn't he? He just wants to get back to the decency of discussion and to find a way 
to get some progress. You can check out my full interview. He talks a lot about his past and pain and what matters. Tyler Perry, Tuesday, October 25th on my podcast, The Chris Cuomo Project. Remember, the new film is on Netflix, Jazz Man's Blues.